All right, great. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to uh, have our first inaugural um, workshop and episode. Um, and uh, we basically are gonna bring in different industry professionals um, that are using new technology to streamline compliance tasks. And our guests today are experts at construction monitoring, which um, I really cut my teeth building an app for construction monitoring and WildNote um, became uh, a really amazing app to manage um, the construction monitoring process. So um, with this series, we really hope that you'll ask questions. Mostly we hope you'll receive value and you'll walk away with real solutions to real problems. I'm the host, Kristen Hazard. I'm the founder and CEO of WildNote. WildNote is an app built specifically for you, environmental consultants, and is top-notch for collecting, managing, and reporting on environmental compliance. And like I said above, one of our sweet spots is definitely construction monitoring. Our Director of Customer Success, Nancy Douglas, is also here. And we are here to create a space for our guests, Jason and Marissa, to talk about compliance solutions. We'll introduce them in a moment, but first Nancy has some housekeeping details to share. All right, hey everybody, so many of you on the, on the um, invite that I see that I've talked to and that I know, and so many new folks, this is very exciting. So thank you for coming. Um, just wanted to say there's two ways to communicate with us during the workshop. The first way is via the chat, which you'll find at the bottom of your um, Zoom screen. Use the chat for any technical issues that you're having, and I'll do my best to help you through that. If you have any questions for our panelists, please post them in the Q&A area. That's also at the bottom of the Zoom window, and we'll address those throughout the workshop, but also um, at the end specifically, we'll, we'll um, do that as a part of our final segment. Just so you have an idea of what to expect in our next 25 minutes, the basic format for our time together is starting with a couple of stories from our guests. Then uh, we'll learn how and why they've incorporated technology into their construction compliance workflow and what problems they're solving. And then we'll um, open uh, the floor up for questions. And if we have time, we'll also talk with Jason and Marissa about their go-to apps in the field. On a final note, since we can't um, have real lunch with all of you and just virtual lunch, we are working with uh, Territory Foods to provide meals for frontline healthcare workers. So we're donating one meal for each workshop attendee. So right now we're up to 44 attendees, so 44 yeah. meals go out. And for every uh, two meals, Territory Foods contributes a third. So, um, and we even get to pick the city. So your presence here is feeding it forward. That's their motto all over the country. Back to you, Kristen. All right, back to me. Okay, so now we're going to uh, introduce our guests. I'll start with Jason Kasky from Kasky Biological Consulting. He's the principal biologist there. And Kasky Biological is a certified woman-owned small business enterprise located in Carlsbad, California. That woman-owned happens to be his wife, Lindsay, also a biologist. They've worked extensively on long and short-term monitoring projects for both linear and standard construction operations. And his professional consulting career is focused on biological resource management, including biological surveys, assessments, and data collection, along with environmental and biological compliance inspection and monitoring. Jason has conducted, staffed, and managed numerous projects that included special status species surveys and linear construction compliance monitoring. Our second guest, Marisha Ishimatsu, I knew I was going to screw that up, Marisha Ishimatsu <laughs> has more than eight years of environmental consulting experience. She has been involved with all aspects of consulting from initial biological analysis to post-construction review. Her specialty is biological construction monitoring as well as permit compliance, documentation, and reporting. Marissa first began working for WRA as construction monitor in 2012. An explorer at heart, I'm with you there, Marissa. She bounced around between different projects until finally settling into a full-time job at Transcon Environmental in 2015. Finally, in 2019, she returned to WRA to develop and lead their construction monitoring team. She now is project manager for many of WRA's large construction projects and leads a team of over 25 project-based employees. One more thing about Marissa. She loves pushing technology beyond its intended use to find new ways to streamline and improve project documentation. 
as both a beta tester and what we call a super user at WildNote, her feedback helps push continuous improvement for better compliance monitoring solutions. So I'd like to start first with you, Marissa, and um, I noticed there were a lot of different um, people on the webinar, and I was hoping you could just describe what exactly is construction monitoring. Thanks, Kristen. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I have to talk to everybody. Um, so construction monitoring in a nutshell is basically everything that goes into helping to keep your projects in compliance with your permits. So there's a variety of different agencies that have uh, that you have to get permits for if you're doing a construction project, whether that's uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, Army Corps of Engineers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so once you get your permits, everything's in order. Some of the things in those permits say you must have pre-construction surveys, you must have a biologist on site, you must have an exclusion fence installed and, and constant exclusion fence monitoring, you must uh, set up in a certain way, etc. So uh, construction monitors help interpret those permit uh, uh, requirements, uh, help you interpret them, and then help put them into practice on the ground. So, All right. Thank you very much. All right. So for my favorite segment is uh, what we're calling stories from the field. And this is our first ask to the audience for participation. We would love to rename this segment, but basically we want to hear from both Jason and Marissa about either a crazy or wonderful experience that they had out in the field. Why don't we start with you, Jason? Yeah, so my, uh, got plenty of stories, uh, obviously, <laughs> uh, but um, a good one uh, can kind of relay how important communication is when you're out on these types of jobs. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts. So we were working on a large scale job, uh, linear job out in the re remote area of Mojave Desert. There's little to no cell service. And um, there was a bad accident that happened to one of the construction crew. And in this particular where the accident happened, there was no cell service. Uh, and so things, it was pretty bad. He uh, ended up breaking up all of his ribs on one side. Mm. And so some panics kind of sat in and again, no cell service. Um, but all of our biologists on these jobs, uh, we require them to have radios so we can communicate down the line. So our biologist that was on site radioed to the guy next bio down the line who did have cell phone service. He jumps on the phone, he starts calling 911 and he's asking them for, you know, send it. He's actually asking them to send out a life flight. And they're like, no, we're not sending out a life flight. Like you're crazy. We don't just take requests for that. And he's like, but you know, he's trying to explain. And the guy ends up actually hanging up on him from emergency services. So he calls right back again and he's like, please, please, like we need life flight out there. And he's like, I'll send out an ambulance, but that's the best I can do. Mm. So they send out an ambulance and the ambulance takes one look at this dirt road that he's got to drive miles on. And he's like, there's no way I can go down it. And we're like, we tried to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so they, uh, the ambulance ends up calling and saying, you know, we really do need a helicopter. And they're like, well, we, where do we go? Where do we land? And all this stuff. So our bios get back on the radios. They radio back down the line. They find the landing zone. They radio in the coordinates to the helicopter pilot. And while it was in flight, they actually did a quick clearance survey of the landing zone to make sure that there were no tortoise in the area. Although I will say safety trumps all things when you're out in the field, but they had some time while I was in flight. So they cleared the area and they found the spot. Um, helicopter landed um, and they flew uh, the guy out and he ended up making a full recovery. So it uh, ends up a happy again. story, but it was, uh, it was wild there for for a good hour there's a lot of panic and running around and chaos but uh, oh my god our our folks kept cool heads and uh, i was really proud of of that moment wow that's a good one how about you marissa well like jason just demonstrated a lot of the best stories that happen in the field happen when things don't go according to plan yes <laughs> right so uh i would actually say you know i i've been a biologist i grew up in california i've been a biologist in california for the last couple of years and you know, every single time I go out in the field, it's completely different. And so I don't actually have a single tail from the field. Um, this morning I was trapping for salt marsh harvest mouse, which was fantastic. I've been implementing 
protections for that species for years. So it was so cool to see those in the wild and to actually see the animal that I've worked so hard to protect in its habitat. Um, and uh, just this last weekend, I went up to the Trinities to go camping with some friends. And I ended up in a spot that I had done extensive work in last year for a project where we were doing rare plant surveys and foothill yellow frog surveys. So it was really cool to go back there and see it in a completely different light and see all the interesting, you know, plants. And I finally got to see some darling Tony, which I've been dying to see forever as the California pitcher plants. I got to see some Cascades frogs, foothill yellow-legged frogs, and just see a different part of this amazing state that we live in. And that's kind of my favorite tale from the field is literally every time I go out because it's amazing every time I do go out, even if things don't go according to plan and everything goes crazy. <laughs> it's true. Nature's the best. It Something is. different every time. <laughs> the best medicine too, especially today. Oh my God, right? During this time? Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. So now we're going to go to our second segment, which is problem solved. And we really would like to know specifically what problems you were facing when you chose to go with a solution like Wild Note. And why don't we start with Marissa this time? Yeah, so I, I, my team is incredibly dispersed. So uh, part of the situation I was having was um, what I like to say, who's got the binder? Who's got the binder? Where's the binder? Is the binder in the trailer? Is the binder in your truck? Did you take the binder home? Where's the binder? So Wild <laughs> Note said so everybody always has the binder because the binder is on everybody's phone which is great so um it also standardizes um forms and form like filling so instead of having like one sentence i was on site you actually get a good narrative of what happened on site through question and answers through checklists through everything so it helps to uh standardize my form analysis and it also helps to uh, make all my dispersed team into one cohesive unit that everybody always had the information they always needed. Mm -hmm. Helpful. Yeah. How big is your team right now out in the field? Um, I have about 25 part-time hires and then I juggle that with another about 15 full-time hires that also work for me in the field. So mm -hmm. the level of communication differs between full-time and part-time. And so um, being able to just plug and play with people on Wild Note, being like, it's on Wild Note, go do it. Like, yeah, great. it's been really great. And are they using their own devices or do you buy devices for everyone? Mixture of both. If their um, phone can handle it, it's really easy for them to use their own devices since Wild Note doesn't take very much battery life or anything. So, um, but I do have a couple people who are, um, don't have devices that can support it, so I do supply devices to them if they can. Right, that makes sense, yeah. And so if you had uh, solved it with a digital solution, um, then what happens if you can't find the binder? Like, what, what goes on then? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question. There's actually multiple binders per project. <laughs> Because we'll have misplaced the binder and then have to go make a whole new binder for another person or somebody takes over and forgets and go, the first person goes on vacation, takes the binder with them or takes it home or something. Right. You make the binder. But uh, yeah. So. All right. How about you, Jason? What were you faced with? Actually, let me go back to, um, I, I looked up some stats actually, and WRA has uploaded over 6,000 photos to the platform. Yeah. So I, when I start, first started building these apps, I really noticed how popular photos were. Um, <laughs> I think we're all very visual by nature and to be able to share photos and see what's going out in the field is pretty cool. Um, and then I looked up your stats, Jason, your field crew, this is awesome, has submitted over 16,000 surveys on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm on Wild Note. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, kind of sets you up for talking about what problem you were faced with. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So when we first started uh, in monitoring, I mean, when we first started, we were still doing printing off daily report forms and handwriting notes and then asking our bios to somehow scan those notes and email them. And then you're dealing with handwriting issues and the quality of the scan. And so, there had to be a better way. So that better way at that time was we're going to do them in a Word document on your computer. Right. And this is really where it kind of got frustrating. We got, we got, we're fortunate enough to, 
to get a pretty large scale job. It had um, a lot of bios in the field, so a lot of data coming in. And uh, they were sending in the Word documents via email to me. So every evening and early morning, I was just getting pummeled with emails. And then you know, I'd, I'd open up all the Word, the Word docs, and they may be different versions of Word. Our client for this wanted all the daily reports into one document so that at the end of the week they could just pretty much scroll through and so when you're copying and pasting word docs together and they're not the same version i was having all sorts of issues with formatting mm -hmm. and i was spending a lot of time just reviewing reports and trying to fix formatting um just so that i could get them out by the end of the week what about and, pictures in there too was that yes yeah, yeah so we were at that time the daily report didn't have where they were embedded the reports were embedded so i was making so we were getting the daily reports all together reviewing them into the one document and then i was taking photos from everybody and i was making a separate photo log so again yeah it's it was just ended up being so much time was wasted early on just and i i say wasted it's not as part of the job but yeah like there were better there was just a better way to do it i knew there was, mm -hmm. it was something way more efficient and so yeah i, I found uh, you all and when we started rolling out the app and they're all together in one program and when i export them they all look the exact same they're all in one document uh, that right there just saved me a ton mm -hmm. of time um, yeah. so it was all just about efficiency yeah. And so that's what that's what led me uh, down the path to find you guys. I'm certainly glad I, I did. It was actually you that we built the Word export for too. Yes, which, yes. Which our client wanted uh, wanted to report still in Word, um, which was a challenge initially. But yeah, you uh, you guys came through. It's great. Mm -hmm. And how big was your field team at its largest? Um, at its largest, we had about 45 in the field at one time. Mm -hmm. And that's about the most that we've had. Um, but uh, we generally are around 10, 10 to 12 in the field on average. Right. But that particular job, yeah, like I said, we got really fortunate with a large one. And it just became overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, and just trying to figure out who emailed me, who didn't, somebody forgot, all these types of things. And now you, know, you can do the search feature in WildNote and I can see everybody from that particular day. And so it just makes things easier on our end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of 45, that's 225 daily reports a week that you were collating. A week, yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it, it just was taking quite a bit of time. And that, and that moment, you know, in that project, just doing the Word, um, I, I estimated that I was spending probably two hours, upwards of two hours a day. It was a six day um, a week job. So it was 10 to 12 hours a week I was spending just trying to fix formatting. And I was just like, this, we, we have to free up some time. Like there's, I gotta, gotta free this up. So yeah, that's what led me down uh, the pathway to find, find another solution. Yeah. Um, I think you both uh, ended up using the platform for not just the data collection out in the field. Um, Marissa, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so again, with that dispersed team, it was proving to be very difficult to do simple tasks like resumes and time cards. So for example, for resumes, we actually have to submit resumes to agencies to get approved on every single project we work on. So every individual has to be approved. But every agency wants specific information. We're not talking like a, hey, I'd like this job resume. We're talking a, hey, this is my experience, so please let me work with this animal resume. And they're different. So I was able to make a form on WildNote that, was, that had all of the information that the agencies ever wanted to see. Who would agencies had approved them for the project, how many animals they handled, how many hours, how many survey area or hours, what exactly they were doing, what they were, they were doing, pre-construction surveys, suitable habitat surveys, mm -hmm. or, um, actual construction monitoring. And that way we had a standardized form for all of the dispersed team. They, like the, my employees can edit it on their end. If they get approved on a project, I can bulk edit on my end. And really helpful to, to keep that dispersed team together and then again um, for time cards we uh, I can export everybody's time card in a pivot table there's no issues what project to bill on all 
the project numbers are already automatically filled on the form. Expenses are easy because they're just a photo upload, just like you would when you're monitoring. So it's very, very simple to do. I'm yeah. using WildNote, which has been great. Very, very helpful. And Jason, did you end up going with timesheets too? Yes, we yeah. did. Yeah, we were uh, printing out timesheets and having, so our, our client required a signature from an on-site rep um, to sign off on the time for the week. Uh, and so we were printing out forms again, handwriting in our times and having, um, the on site rep sign off. Um, and so, yeah, again, it was getting them to have nice penmanship and the scanning yeah. and all that sort of thing. And so, um, again, yeah, we talked to you guys about time card and being able to actually sign on the phone. Um, so that was nice. Um, so now we can take our phone in the app and hand it to the on-site rep and he will actually can sign with his finger uh, on the phone, review the time, sign, and then syncs and comes you know, right, right to our computer. Oh, it's nice. been nice. Although, yeah, with the COVID situation, we have rolled that back a little bit. We're not handing our phones off uh, right now for signatures. But um, we were doing that before, and we hope to, to again do that. Um, oh, yeah, they don't want to be sharing the... Correct, phone. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, we're still we using the time cards um, still, and so we just are just taking verbals and, um, mm -hmm. and uh, taking emails, like saying we're, we're good, we're signing off on this. So. Right. Yeah, I guess um, WildNet's a good solution if you don't want to be touching dirty old timesheets or dirty old uh, data sheets, right? right yeah. <laughs> data sheets. <laughs> so um, there's actually a question. Um, Marissa, are you involved in the construction monitoring permit and restoration to pre-construction standards as well as filing the notice of intent to be covered under the state federal stormwater permit? That and then there's more. In addition to the NOI for the state federal permits, do you file the notice of termination for the construction stormwater permit? So here at WA, we actually have a full engineering um, section to our company. So I um, have not formally done an NOI or NOT, but others at my company do. We do handle that and we do mm -hmm. construction monitoring around those. So we have a, a SWIP people and, and engineers that, that can handle all of that. All right, cool. And then this is a time if anyone else has questions or construction monitoring problems they want to problem solve or any discussion, this would be a perfect time to go ahead and throw into the Q&A. Um, yeah, and I'll say any technology, you know, questions around this kind of work. We've got Kristen Hazard who is, she's a programmer. She knows this stuff backwards and forwards. So you got a chance to ask those kind of questions as yeah, well. You got it. You've got the robot brain on the call. So, uh, <laughs> anybody there? And while we wait for those to come flying in, um, how about if we go to, uh, what are your go-to apps for use in the field? We'll start with Jason. Um, for, so for photos, we, uh, we generally go with Theodolite um, mm -hmm. so that we have all the data from the, for the photo right on there. Um, we also use Collector from time to time when we're doing su survey work. Um, mm -hmm. And then a good birding app, iBirds Pro, that I use quite a bit when I'm going out for nesting bird type work. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a really good, good app. Um, those are, those are my go-tos. Yeah. So Theodolite, I guess it, it, it sort of marks the lat long, the yep. date. Yep. The and then you can even mark, uh, you can write it. You can even yeah. put it on it. Yep. And it'll even show you the direction that you're facing on the app. And, and, right. Or on the photo. So. And it just overlays it on the photo and bam, yep. you've just got that stored exactly. right on the photo. Wow, yep. that's nice. How about, um, so that flow must be you take the photo in Theodolite and then you capture it from the gallery. Exactly. Put it into WildNote, basically. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. It's a good segue, Kristen. There's a couple of questions in uh, the Q&A about integrating with mapping um, and GIS and geotagging. So maybe you can address those. Okay, so does WildNote, um, that first question was from Wendy Diatilio. Thank you, Wendy. The second one is, does WildNote integrate a map 
with project features and survey areas so surveyors can navigate. So um, we, we have uh, what I would consider like the most basic mapping features where you can drop points, but we, certain, we currently don't import, and I think that's what this question is alluding to, is importing an existing map with features into um, like our map so that you can see those. So at the current uh, state of WildNote, you can import what we call project locations, very powerful feature, and they can have lat longs associated, points associated with those, and they show up on the map. But we currently don't have like a polygon or line essentially that come in. Um, and then please ask a, a follow up, Marcus, if I did not exactly answer that correctly. Um, and then does WildNote field notes integrate with GIS or have geotag features? So yes, we actually just recently implemented um, both a GDB, a geodatabase export that'll go right into your Esri or um, what's the other map? QG, QGIS. QGIS. Um, so you can utilize that GDB export or we also have um, GeoJSON, which is uh, my favorite, um, and that is a JSON standard that can be imported. It can be used as either like a developer API um, data structure, so you can import into other systems or also into your GIS systems. So that's those answers. Uh, let me piggyback on Marcus's question really quick, just to say, because we're saying so, server, so surveyors can navigate with the, if you load your um, lat longs in advance um, using the locations concept in WildNote, you can touch into those points on the mobile device and launch Google to navigate um, to those spots. So if that's kind of what you're asking about as well, that's absolutely possible. And on the subject of GIS, we did just create an integration as well with um, the EOS Aero products for your GNSS Bluetooth devices. Um, you can use any of the EOS Aero products with WildNote and capture those more highly accurate points as well. Higher accuracy. Okay, let's go to Marissa and talk about her go-to apps. Yes, yeah, so I have a couple categories for uh, when I'm out hiking and having fun and, and walking around. I love Peak Finder. If you have mm. a Peak Finder app, it's mm. Killer. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, I, for birding, um, have had, I just used to it, I guess. I have the Birds of North America app that I really like for um, bird identification. Um, I also really appreciate Seek and iNaturalist for identification of plants and everything that you can take a picture of. Really wonderful tool, citizen science, and the built in um, AI is amazing in terms of identification. So, super appreciated um, for those. And then like Jason said, for data collection in the field collector, I use a lot for big mapping situations. Mm -hmm. um, I use um, the OSHA heat index app for safety sake, uh, making sure that people are, are doing stuff to keep themselves safe in hot weather. Mm. When I work for scheduling and um, pushing out schedules to monitors and I use Slack for communication. So those are my, Typical, that's my typical suite of apps. <laughs> What's the schedule? How's that look with the, with the scheduling? So people, as again, I have a dispersed team. So on this dispersed team, um, it's really hard for me to call 25 people to see if they're available to work. Yeah. So they um, are able on their end on, on their app to say, I'm unavailable Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, free Thursday, Friday. And then I can see that, match it up to what projects they're approved on and assign them work and then once they get that assignment they'll get a little notification pop up that'll say hey you've been assigned two monitoring projects on thursday and friday and then we can use slack to communicate on those so it's, it's really easy it's um i think it was built for the restaurant industry to pick up shifts yeah so it's been great christian you have to wrap us up i think all right so uh i'm gonna share my screen again here and then I'm going to talk. Uh, first, I want to give a big, big thank you to Marissa and Jason for taking time out of their really busy schedules to come share their expertise with us. We really hope it was valuable to you. Um, this is their emails in case you want to connect with them. Um, and we also have my email and Nancy's email down on the bottom left. Our next 
Lunch and Learn workshop is in two weeks. We'll be doing them every two weeks and we'll have Matt Alexander from Anatom Geo Solutions and talk all things mapping, GNSS, drones, you know, cool, cool nerdy stuff like that. Um, and also I'll go to here and talk about um, all summer, all summer long, we're gonna do a series of solution-based workshops. Uh, and here is the schedule. We have, um, uh, we can do, you know, a demo for you. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can go to our website and um, we can talk more if Wild Note is something that you'd be interested in checking out. So I think that's it, Nancy. Any, any? No, thank you so much everyone for attending. And um, yeah, feel free to grab our information, reach out to us if you have any uh, follow-up questions after this. There was one quick question, Marissa. What was the app that you're using for? The scheduling. For the scheduling? Yeah, I just answered that. So that's called When I Work. When I work, okay, There cool. was another question that said, um, that asked about what the plant ID app was, and that's called Seek, S-E-E-K, from iNaturalist. Very cool. Oh, you're answering questions, Marissa, nice. <laughs> Look at her go, right on. <laughs> All right, okay, well, thank you everyone for joining, and we'll sign off now. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.